Hi, my name is Dimitri Frederick. I am your host on how to do MLM in Massachusetts. And I have a pleasure to, and to have uh, one of my true friends and a guest host today, Evelyn Robertson, with me to talk about MLM in Massachusetts, how to do it, and what is it all about. Evelyn, welcome. Hi, Dimitri. Well, thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. And uh, I do have a really interesting question. What is MLM? Well, MLM stands for multi-level marketing and um, you know many people know it by network marketing or um, you know sometimes you, people kind of confuse me with um, direct sales but network marketing all in all is the ability to actually be a distributor for a company and represent that company and actually make extra income for yourself and your family on a part-time or full-time basis. Oh, I see. So who did you write this book for? Well Years ago, when I was, um, you know, writing Why Entrepreneurship, What Is It All About, which is my first business book, um, I always knew that I'm going to dedicate and focus on network marketing people. And so it, it was a general book designed for that. But also, um, when I looked at the 20 years I've been doing network marketing over, over and over, that there were some mistakes that people were making constantly. And I wanted to write a book particularly for Massachusetts because the East Coast is, a, is a, I say, it's a different beast. And therefore, um, you know, there's some things that we do differently than the rest of the, the states. And so I wanted to dedicate this book primarily just for Massachusetts folks. Mm. Well, you know, network marketing or MLM seems to have a major stigma. Yeah. Um, is it a pyramid scam? or Tell me well, about that. I actually addressed that as one of the chapters because I know it's the most common thing. Even yesterday, I was sitting down with a gentleman um, from another country, you know, in, you know, here in America, even himself had a stigma about network marketing. It's like, you know, it's like, what is that thing about? You know, isn't that bad thing? And it's always a negative connotation towards mm -hmm. you know, the term. But you know, I, I address it in the various ways of looking at how we live. You know, from our government to money, and thinking about okay. We think everything's a scam, but every other thing, you know, what is a job? We've heard of Enron. We've heard, you know you know, conspiracies and, and so on. So network marketing is not a, a pyramid. You know, it's just like, it's just the way it's structured. And so people um, always have that attachment of it's a pyramid scheme um, from someone who created a Ponzi scheme back in the day. But every day that you do business, you go around, whether it's work, school, what, what have you, there's scams that take place all, all over the place. So sometimes, you know, the bad stigma of one um, place of business or entity that does something wrong, you know, in network marketing kind of feels like it carries along a lot of, t of the time, the name, you know, payment schemes. But it's not you know, a payment scheme because if it was, why would billions of people um, create that much income, you know, and um, on a regular basis, you know, people have, I, and I personally have seen people, friends of mine in the industry that actually have made a full-time income from that where they've been able to walk away from their you know, full-time positions. And some people do it on a part-time basis. So it does work, but understanding how does it work well in Massachusetts is a different topic. Well, now, you just said that you know people who have made a full-time career out of this, but it's been my experience that most people fail. Uh, exactly. Can you explain there, why that is? There's a lot of reasons why most people fail, and some of them is, is just basic thing of character, you know, who you are. One of the things I stress in the book is that you need to master and understand the four fishes, which is you know a shark, a sea urchin, a whale, and a dolphin. You know those are different personality traits that people are in business and in life. But they're also how you talk to those person, how you approach them, how you show them your business model. Because one of the mistakes that we make and why people are failing so much is that they don't have the right business model that's attached to the way they are as a character, mm -hmm. their personalities. And also, you know, is the business the, the right business for them and the right timing of it? Because we make a lot of mistakes in those things, thinking that just because someone approached me about a business opportunity doesn't mean that I have to get into it or think it's good or in, and therefore I want to invest in it. You know, just like we have, you know, great Scott, um, it was it, um, stock tips that we give to people, but sometimes, you know, they don't work out. You know, so you need to know what works for you, and, and that's one thing I did. I, I delved deep into looking at why are some of the mistakes. For example, um, when I went back and looked at even my own uh, success and failures in business, and I looked at, you know, a lot of time my organization had zeros behind it, and I said, why is that? And I asked that question to myself and looked at, who are the people that I recruit? 
And also I look at myself, some things I did very well. Now, like, why was I so su successful in those businesses? Mm -hmm. And it's because my passion, my drive was all into it versus sometimes we get someone involved in a business model that doesn't fit them and we don't really know why. And you know, we're just off to the next person. And that's one of the things I try to make people understand in this book. Well, you know, I wanted to ask you about personal development because I've read um, in your book that you talk about that a lot. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, what, do you, what is personal development? Personal development, you know, I call it the holy grail of network marketing. And, and I say that because I'm passionately about personal development in the sense that it's reading positive books. You know, most of us after college, we don't even open a book to save our life per se, mm -hmm. meaning that you come and grow. And a lot of times we come into network marketing chasing money, but there's an educational aspect to it. And actually that's what attracted me to the industry and that's what's helped me to develop myself as a man, as a businessman, and, and, and you know, as a person who thinks beyond, because you know, uh, spiritually that, that is, a, a lot of the great authors of personal development books, you know, actually have a spiritual side to them. And truly some of the things that they take out of uh, you know, personal development comes from the Bible. So, you know, it's actually embracing both the spiritual side of, you know, the Bible and as well as the business side and taking the, the, all the great parts of it and bringing it to help you grow and become more. Because some of us, we just stop growing um, after we, f we finish school because we're just living day-to-day -day life, working hard, but don't do anything to actually stimulate our brain cells mm -hmm. to, to be successful. So you feel that uh, whether you're in network marketing or out, personal development is still an area that people need to focus on just in their day-to-day -day exactly. lives. Well, it's interesting you ask that question because for me, I've experienced it both ways where I was out of network marketing and I realized I stopped doing personal development. Uh -huh. Because when you're around people who do personal development, it stretches you, your verbiage changes as well, and I've seen that happens to, to, to me mm -hmm. personally. But also, when I look at, you know, why is it that people who are not network marketing doing personal development? Because they've never been taught and understand what is personal development. And it's positive, but it's not reading a, a sexy novel <laughs> at nighttime saying, that's not personal development. Right. You know, it, it's books that enrich you, like the Robert Kiyosaki's, you know, Malcolm Gladwell's, one of my newest. And, and some people will say, well, that not, that's not quite in um, personal development, but it is um, outliers, you know, books like that. Mm -hmm. And so it enriches your life, but it also helps you think in a different level uh, to stretch because you want to grow internally versus the money that you come because the size of the income that you make is not necessarily a reflection of you being successful in business, but more of who you've become to the personal development that you've done over time. And that's the power behind personal development. Hmm, okay. So in one of your uh, subchapters, you talk about, um, it's I believe titled, I'm your pusher. Yes. Uh, can you explain that? <laughs> like a drug dealer, right? I'm your pusher. <laughs> well, you know, Observing people in network marketing has been one of the things I've done as a business person and understanding how to relate people to people properly. And across my many years in network marketing, I've had a friend that I became friends with and she actually ended up doing business with me in one of my companies later on. And I realized that she was actually a pusher. Um, and there's a, what the other term I call a jumper. And those are pe people, jumpers are, are simply people who have had success in network marketing. And we know that the, the average person, you know, doesn't have success. You know, it's actually higher than that person, percentage of people who actually do. So uh, a pusher simply is someone who's just pushing products after products. You know, we talk about how many times, you know, we've been to network market, how many business have we've done, <laughs> you know, and some of us kind of ashamed to talk about that, but we've had a lot of success or failures, but we just keep going to the next business. But the, the, the pusher is someone who doesn't seem to get the f key elements. We were talking about personal development before mm -hmm. and just a second ago. And so in personal development, you know certain things over time that you've learned. And so you kind of learn to evaluate your businesses better as you go along in, in the industry. But a person who's just the pusher sometimes forget and they just keep jumping to the next and to the next and trying to find that one thing, that one business that's going to help them become successful. And they never seem to get the, the key elements of what network marketing should be all about or the success. And then you have the, the, the jumpers. Now the jumpers kind of like, you know, oversees the pushers in the sense that the jumpers are people who've had the success, like I said, but they cannot seem to maintain themselves in one company long term. You know, two or three years or so, they seem to be to the next thing. And so it's almost like a, a, a someone who has a habit, 
you know, and they cannot you know, get enough of, of the fix they need, the high to, to be successful, but maintain the success, they just have to go to the next thing because they're chasing that money. And so a lot of times you have to be careful that you're doing business with people who are just jumpers. Mm -hmm. you know, and those are the people that have had a lot of success and they use that success um, to actually influence a pusher to come and push more products mm -hmm. or services. Well, your book talks about being diversified yes. network marketing. Aren't people who you call jumpers, aren't they a little diversified? Or, you know, tell me about what being diversified in network marketing is all about. Um, jumpers and pushers are a different thing. It's something that happens all the time in network marketing. But being diversified, meaning within the company that you're in, that the company itself is internationally exposed. Mm -hmm. Versus if you have a, a company that's just in the United States or in one section of your marketplace, or even yourself, if you become a member or associate of that company, now you are actually only doing business in Massachusetts, for example. You know, Massachusetts is one of the hardest states to do business in. So if we had the storm that we had like last year in 2015, imagine yourself trying to be stuck in Massachusetts trying to do business. You're not going to go nowhere. You're going to be sitting there, I'm going to stay at home tonight. I'm not going to a business briefing. And so being diversified allows you to have multiple income streams within your company, but also outside of your region, mm -hmm. you know, outside of your state, you know, and most importantly today, I say it's so important when you're doing business that your company, when you're valuing that company to get started in, that it has international exposure. Mm -hmm. Because I talk about the, the real issues economically that we're facing, you know, and it's a subject I address in why entrepreneurship, because you, know, you need to think globally, because we are all connected globally as a business and as a people. And so you should look at your business being diversified so that when something happens in your state, you know, today we have so many issues now. We're worried about terrorists, worried about attacks, you know, so many things that's happening. And you don't want your business to shut down. You don't want to have a bad weather storm to actually shut you down for a week, two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, so being diversified is so important in everyday things that you do in your life. So being diversified, do you feel that that makes um, multi-level marketing recession-proof? What, tell me about that. Uh, can you explain um, that a little bit? Recession further? proof is one of the philosophies that I actually created and understand over time. And it's actually something that I practice today and everything that I do as, as when it comes to business in my life. And so when I'm looking at a business model, I look at is the product or service recession proof in the sense that um, can it bear the pressure of a bad economy? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, we came, just came from 2008 where the economy was you know, struggling, you know, is that business that you're doing, is it really a need or there's just a want? You know? So like a knickknack, you know, and one of the things I said, um, when uh, Japan had the earthquake and, uh, oh, excuse me, the tsunami, I believe, and it, it caused that power plant to shut down and melt. And you know, I said, there's no one sitting there from the Apple store waiting in line to actually buy a cell phone. You know, it, we are not in survival mode. And so when I look at the economy, I say, you have to be careful the choices of business that you get involved in. Um, one of my passions you know, for writing this book is also for the baby boomer generation. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of them are retiring right now. And so I wanted to make sure that they truly know how to evaluate a business model. Mm -hmm. So that when they're looking at the business, that they're not wasting all the hard earned money that they work hard for. It's hard enough that you've done the 40-40 plan, work so hard, <laughs> and then you retire, and then now, Someone's trying to sell you into that business, but it's not the right business for you. So I, I, can, I know you cannot afford to, uh, to lose your money, so why should I afford to lose my money in the wrong business model? So it has to be recession-proof for you as well. Okay. Now, you mentioned the 40-40 plan. Can yes. you share with us what that's all about? Well, you know, it's something we talk about all the time in the industry. You know, you work 40 years of your life. Um, 40 hours a week to retire on 40% of your income. Mm -hmm. And uh, we say that all the time, you know, in the industry, but I think, you know, people in the real world don't quite understand the reality of it until they retire and realize that that income that they had 100% of, you know, is not enough when you get it at 40%. And now you have to cut back, readjust your life. Mm -hmm. And so 40-40 plan is it, a tough thing. And it's becoming a reality check for a lot of Americans today. And that's why they are looking for another income stream to supplement what they used to make at 100%. And network marketing is actually one of those vehicles that they will utilize to do so. Mm -hmm. So do you offer coaching? Oh, yes. Um, you know, the, the last few months as I was writing this book, I realized how powerful coaching is. Uh, I'm a person, a, person, a person of personal development and realized that coaching in itself 
is the key to helping anybody, regardless of if it's network marketing or whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, business people, professionals, you know, educators, they all have coaches, you know. So I, I realize that in Massachusetts folks need coaching because a lot of us are doing network marketing the wrong way and I want to be able to provide that service uh, starting in 2016. Uh, I'll be offering my services so that, um, you know, I want to help you, direct you in the right path and also look at yourself internally. And, and that's where that coaching is focused on, you know, the four fishes as well. But also you as an individual person, I think sometimes we miss, you know, there's some other things that need to be worked on on yourself before you need to look at business or personally as well. Okay. So now is this your first book? No, it is. I, I know I've mentioned uh, Wild Entrepreneurship a couple of times. Um, now, actually, that's not even my first book. My first book was a poetry book called um, Poetic oh, Imagery, poet. um, Company Poetic Imagery Motion. A book is um, Pages from My Heart. So I've done that, and I've been writing poetry for 18 years. So that's one of my passions. And also um, writing business books and reading on business. So um, Wild Entrepreneurship is one of my passions. Um, in a lot of times people think, okay, I don't know business, I don't care, I don't like business. <laughs> and so I understood that writing that book and, and I wanted to focus the first book as a three-part series, focusing on the first book in the sense of talking about the real issues going on today, you know, your, our economy. Right now we're heading towards the election year, you know, is that person you're going to pick, you know, is that the right choice for you? Is, is the things that are going on in the economy, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, 401k is depleting right now. So I talk about all these real life situations. Actually, I have the book here. And the book, you know, t has several images in the front cover. And someone say, well, wow, well, that's a lot of different images. What does it mean? Well, each one of these uh, uh, topics that I address from teenage pregnancy, like what does that have to do with business? It has a lot of things to do with business. Um, real estate, you know, the stock market, you know, even God, you know, a lot of us want to be successful in business but don't have no idea what's God's plans for your life or what your purpose in life is. So once you have those things aligned properly, can you start figuring out how do I find the right business model that's good for me? Mm -hmm. so. so you mentioned that um, there are a series of books. The first yeah. one is Why Entrepreneurship yes. in the Business Series. Yeah. Um, and the second one is How to Do MLM. Well, actually, that's a compliment because um, how to do MLM is very dedicated to New England, how to do business MLM. Mm -hmm. The second part of the of Wild Entrepreneurship book is actually going to be focusing on network marketing, giving people, you know, I, I keep it real with people, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly mm -hmm. of network marketing because I want you to do it the right way and also know the pitfalls to avoid as well. Mm -hmm. So it's going to also be to endorse. It's, it's not to tear down network marketing because I've read a lot of books. I hear a lot of people talk about network marketing, but they're always from the outside looking in but never understand how this industry work and operate. And so I'm someone who, who's a veteran of network marketing. And so I want to actually encourage you because it is one of the few opportunities that people have and directions for what do I do next when I lose my job? Mm -hmm. What do I do next, you know, besides relying on, you know, social security, um, you know, retirement or, for, or whatever lack of 401k I have left over. <laughs> so um, this book is just there to endorse uh, network marketing as well as, you know, look at the baby boomer generation and how do we get to this situation that we're in. Part three is simply, you know, look at legacy. You know, what is it that we're working hard for? You know, that part of the book called What Is It All About? What is it all about that you're working towards? And so we look at legacy, um, leaving something to our next generation. It's one of the most powerful things. And I talk about church, you know, um, the problems of the church today and how, you know, they need to help more people in different ways to look at entrepreneurship to help encourage the church community to grow. So, okay. so where can we find your books? Are they um, online, in bookstores? Where can we find them? Actually, my books are on Amazon. I have a great relationship with Amazon um, affiliate, so I, I, I'm published there. Um, the ebook is actually coming out in January as well. And um, I have actually affiliate partnerships across Boston with different uh, vendors, um, bookstores, uh, Harvard um, Bookstore. I actually just took my book uh, just uh, yesterday. I went there. Um, some other places as well, and so it's all on my website on how to do MLM in mass.com. There's uh, affiliate links are right there available. Okay. So I hear you've got some upcoming events. <laughs> uh, Want to tell us about them? Sure. Um, I'm doing a book launch officially for this book, How to Do MLM in Massachusetts. It's going to be in uh, High Park, actually, um, a post uh, 50, um, 78. I think the information is available online. 
and um, we've got some other projects lined up as well. Um, so I'm doing some book signings up in Brockton as well, and those information are on the website as, as well. So um, we can see you at some book signings in the near future? Yes. Um, January 9th is the official launch of the book, um, How to Do MLM. So I'll be doing a talk and discussion I, and have an open session to people to talk about network marketing for real and just address our issues we face and how to be successful in, in, in the new year doing network marketing. And then I have a uh, book signing uh, for the Harvard, uh, book signing up in Brockton. There's a bookstore. I can't remember the name. Oh, Heritage Bookstore. I'll be up there as well doing a book signing, and then I'll be doing the Fuga bookstores towards the end of the month as well. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like uh, whoever reads your book is going to learn, like you said, the good, the bad, and the ugly about network marketing. Is yeah. that really what's going to happen? Or? Well, that's on the Why Entrepreneurship book that I'm going to save and work on that next year. But this book is really to look at the ins and outs of network marketing for Massachusetts, for New England. Um, cause we are a rare breed of how to do business, and so I needed to help people understand that there's certain ways and styles of how to do network marketing, whatever your network marketing business is, is far different from how the West Coast does it or the South does it. And so I wanted to guide people to make sure that they're doing it properly and having the right success, and also you know, be critical on how they evaluate business models to make sure that it's the right business for them. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been very interesting. I really appreciate all that you've shared. Um, I've learned a lot myself, particularly mm -hmm. um, about personal development, uh, learning exactly what MLM means and why I should even consider being a part of it. So I encourage those of you who haven't read Dimitri's book to pick up a copy or to come and see him at his book signing. Yes. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And I'm truly passionate about it. One of the things that we probably didn't touch um, based on a little bit is pastors. You know, one of the things I'm encouraging pastors to come out and actually uh, listen to what I have to say because I know a lot of churches are involved with network marketing and a lot of them are not doing it properly and not, not aligning the structure of the organization properly. And there's a lot of people that's from out, out of state bringing in their business models and thinking you could do it. Um, in the state, and it's not true. There's a lot of businesses that's right for somebody and some that's not. And so I encourage you to come out and look at how to do MLM in Massachusetts. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming out, and God bless.